Good afternoon fellow YouTube addicts, welcome back to Maverick Baking and welcome back to another food review. Today we are taste testing some Polish chocolate bars. <sighs> yeah, I don't know either. Here in the northeast of Scotland where I live, we have a very big Polish population, which means that a lot of the supermarkets that we have nearby have some great full aisles of Polish produce that, I mean, I have no idea what most of it is because it's a completely different language, obviously, but some of it looks really exciting. And something that I was especially excited about is how cheap their chocolates, candies, and sweets are, like ridiculously cheap. Here in the UK, you can easily walk into any you know, food store and pick up maybe a bar of chocolate or a candy bar for 70 to 80 pence at the moment. I could buy a full-size Polish chocolate bar in the same shop for like 32 pence. So I have no idea why they're so cheap. I don't know if it's a good or a bad sign, uh, but we're gonna find out today. So I'm going to be tasting four different Polish chocolate bars today. I have no idea if these are, you know, widely popular in Poland, but I found them in the Polish aisle. So I thought, you know, someone somewhere must be eating these. So first of all, the one that I could read most easily and pick up and kind of figure out what we were dealing with is this Nestle Princessa bar. So it looks like it's gonna be a sort of chocolate wafer with some kind of milky or white chocolatey filling inside. Like I said, you know, if you're Polish and you're watching this and you're like, bitch, I have never seen that in my life. I'm sorry, I'm just picking up what I saw. It's very light, like really light, but it's a decent size, you know, it's a decent length and it's a decent width as well. It's just, as you can see, your standard kind of wafer snack um, with some layers of some kind of milky product inside. Oh well, let's just try it. The Nestle Princessa Zebra Bar. I've had worse things in my mouth. Basically, just exactly the same on the inside as you saw on the outside. Those dark chocolate wafers are so dry, like sap all the moisture out of your mouth dry. It does have a little bit of an Oreo kind of flavor. It's that sort of really rich, dark cocoa taste with a little bit of an ambiguous milky flavored filling. It tastes and smells like diet food, you know, it's it's not very fully flavored or anything like that. So, meh, it's okay. Um, I don't love it. So I'm probably gonna give this Nestle Princessa Zebra Bar a three out of five. Next up, we have something that looks a little bit more exciting. So we have this dark chocolate and cherry bar. And, you know, I can't obviously, I, you know, I don't obviously want to try and pronounce any of the Polish words and embarrass myself, but it does actually say dark chocolate with cherry filling. It almost looks like a sort of black forest kind of vibe, you know, that sort of dark chocolate with cherry and cream. It's a great size. And like I said, I got a bar this size for something like 40, 50 pence. It was crazy cheap. Oh, wow. That smells boozy. It's a very strong smell in chocolate. It smells like a very dark chocolate. It's very shiny. It's been tempered very well. Um, as I said, it's very shiny and the cherry in it smells quite boozy. So there's also a sort of cream filling being suggested here, lol. Um, I don't know whether that is white chocolate or whether it is a kind of creamy stuff. So let's just bite into it and see how this Vidal, Videl, I've no idea, chocolate cherry bar is. Wow. That is hella strong. So when you bite into it, you can see, you know, we've got that kind of soft cream filling inside. The chocolate is quite thin, but it's very dark. So you don't need an awful lot of it. And you can see just a little bit of that cherry red filling poking out there. The cherry flavor is really strong. It's a little bit artificial, like you would get in sort of those cherry flavored sweets, you know, like chewy sweets, but it works really well with that chocolate. If you're into kind of black forest cake or black forest gato or even just dark chocolate in general, I'm pretty sure you would love this. It's pretty damn good. I'm gonna give this bar a solid four out of five. Moving on to something that looks distinctly European. Chocolate and hazelnuts are like a super popular match in Europe. And 
Also, wafers seem to be a thing. So this is another wafer bar. This is the... <laughs> don't laugh. I'm gonna say something like Grieschki. I'm not really sure. Uh, go free bar. So it's got a little sticker on here telling me something, but I don't know what it's telling me, so I can't tell you. And it just says it's vanilla chocolate with hazelnuts. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a wafer, almost like an ice cream kind of wafer cone there. So again, this is super light. Um, <laughs> so light, I'm dropping it. Um, like 13 grams or 1.16 ounces. So it's pretty light. As I said though, it was really cheap. So this is our go free bar. As you can see, there is what looks to be a layer of some kind of vanilla filling as well as that chocolate and hazelnut filling with another kind of dry wafer. Let's just see how this Go Free Bar tastes. Tastes of very little. Even though this smelled quite good, when you bite into it, it has almost no flavor. The wafer is really dry. It's kind of sh it's kind of sweet, but without much of a flavor to back it up. The sort of vanilla cream. It's just a texture more than anything, and not a particularly nice one. Just a kind of soft, mushy texture, and I can't taste any chocolate or hazelnut in there. Even though you can see it, I'm not getting any of that. I'm sorry, fans of the Go Free wafer in Poland or elsewhere. I'm gonna give this a two out of five. Finally, we're moving on to the weirdest and scariest of all of these bars. We're moving on to the Pavlek, Pavlek, I'm not really sure, Advocat chocolate bar. <sighs> now this is made, I believe, from the wrapper at least, by the same people that made our chocolate and cherry bar. So, you know, I know the chocolate's gonna taste good. The Advocat is the terrifying thing. There were lots of these bars and other kind of Polish chocolate bars in the Polish aisle that I was in of the supermarket that were very heavy on toffee flavors. I thought, you know what? I've had so much caramel and toffee chocolate in my life that that just seemed a bit boring. So I decided to pick up this really freaky looking one. Anyone who hasn't had Advocat, it's like, it's an egg based drink that's also alcoholic. So imagine eggnog, but with like vodka in it. It's, it's pretty thick. It's very eggy. Um, I've never tasted it myself, but it's something I've never been <laughs> really drawn to, to be honest, just by the look and what I've heard from other people. For some reason, this brand have decided to put this weird boozy custard inside a chocolate bar. I am frankly a little bit terrified. Um, <laughs> this does contain alcohol. It is 2.4% alcohol. So basically, it's like drinking a Bud Light. <laughs> it's a very, you know, it's a very attractive chocolate bar. Just a kind of simple design there, but again, very shiny and well-tempered and a nice thickness to it. It looks like a good quality dark chocolate. There isn't a lot of milk chocolate from what I saw either. Dark chocolate seems to be heavily favored, which is fine with me because I love dark chocolate. I'm just gonna stop stalling and eat this now. This is an Advocat flavored chocolate bar. This is one of those things that just didn't really need to happen. When you bite into it, the first thing you taste is the dark chocolate because the dark chocolate, it's like 50% cocoa solids, so it's quite rich. Um, but as soon as you start chewing and as soon as you swallow that, you get the burn of that gooey, boozy filling in there. The filling itself doesn't taste terrible kind of tastes like someone mixed up some Oreo cream with a little bit of vodka and then shoved it inside a chocolate bar. I don't love it. I don't hate it. I just don't really know who's going to be buying this. Like what, you know, I can think of many situations where you would need a boozy chocolate bar just, you know, to get you through life in more ways than one. But, you know, you could at least make it taste better. <laughs> I'm going to have to give this another three out of five. So overall, I think that could have been worse. <laughs> it could have been better, but it could have been worse. Um, I'm definitely intrigued to pick up more Polish chocolate bars now, especially seeing how much kind of dark chocolate and the decent quality of dark chocolate that they are producing. Here in the UK, we don't really have a lot of popular dark chocolate bars. 
you know, it's mostly kind of milk chocolate or the occasional white chocolate. So it's interesting to see such experimentation with that. Do let me know if you guys are of Polish heritage yourself or you know of any really good Polish chocolate bars that I missed out on that I really, really should try. I'm gonna keep my eye out for some more. So you may see another kind of Polish chocolate review video coming very soon, especially to this cheap. Like I might just live on them instead. Huge shout out and thank you again to my Patreon supporters Enrico and Nate Peterson. It means the world, no matter how much you're donating, it just helps support the channel and it's just lovely to be thought of. If you would like to help support this growing little channel of mine, there is a link to my Patreon page in the description box below where you can do so. There will also be a link in the description box to my blog Maverick Baking where you can find even more reviews, some recipes and just words on things you can eat. Thank you guys, as always, for being here and for watching my stupid little videos. It means a lot, and I will see you again very soon.